my car is the one vehicle today that can guarantee to get you to your destination. The PAL-V, of course, has two functions. It flies and it drives. So whether it's bad weather or whether there's something else that we might come across as a, an incident that prevents us from flying, we can actually still drive to where we need to get to. My initial history in regards to flying cars probably started when I was about nine years old and was flying with another pilot who was learning to fly a plane and I got to sit in the other seat while he did a lot of that. So I had a natural affinity to flying and that actually morphed into some personal flying. I used to fly paragliders a lot. One of the things that I thought about was maybe attempting to fly a gyroplane around the world, which nobody had ever done. And somebody put me in touch with Pal V. What sets the PAL-V aside from a helicopter revolves around the concept of learning to fly, the simplicity. Landing and taking off in a helicopter is purported to be the, the most dangerous phase of flight. With a gyroplane, it's much more simplistic. It's very much like flying a fixed wing aircraft. The transition from flight to car is very quick. It's a matter of less than a minute. It's the same in terms of time to change the car into the aircraft, but if it's the beginning of the day, any pilot by regulation has to do an initial inspection on the aircraft. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. The PAL-V has been designed so that it will descend to a landing under the pilot's control with absolutely no power. I think if you, if you look at what problems we might be able to alleviate with a flying car, we're getting governments, security agencies, NGOs who are talking about how can this be useful to them? Can they get, can Médecins Sans Frontier, can they get a, a doctor into a remote field hospital more easily with a flying car than they might otherwise be able to? What does the, the PAL-V do for us personally from an exploration point of view? What new boundaries open up for us? And certainly from where I live, in the middle of the Rockies in a little place called the Kootenays, it allows me to never have a bad day, frankly. If ever I think that something is not the way it should be and I'm feeling a little bit grumpy about it, to be able to drive to my local airport, take off and fly through the Rocky Mountains, fly over glaciated areas through towers of granite, I will come back with the biggest smile on my face after having done that. When we talk about the future of transportation, two months ago I thought, well, let me poll our database. 80% of our respondents said, absolutely. Flying cars are part of my future. That is a shocking change in our society that I don't think we've wrapped our heads around yet. It's very cool.